I'm Al Phil Reese. I'm Anna Safford. And this is Mod Po Minute, actually five minutes. We're hoping to scratch the surface of a short poem that we like. So let's get started. I'm here in the lovely writer's house garden with the inimitable Davy Niddle. What's up it kind of rhymes a little bit when I say it that. It kind of does. <laughs> so we're here to talk about um, a another incredible poet and friend of ours, Julia Block, um, and a poem of hers called Hospitalist um, from her collection Valley Fever. So Davy, I was wondering if you would read it for us, and then we'll sure. talk about it. Hospitalist. New definitions of doing poorly, doing up on the face. Not always facing up. Not always aware of corners, sad and light jazzy. Aristotle says thought by itself moves nothing. No one decides to have sacked Troy. All the sounds are in miniature, but the room is large in ruined light. Mm, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so maybe a, a starting point would be to deal with this title first. What, do, what does this title say to you? How do you read it? How does it help you give some inroad or avenue into the poem? So it was a word that I've been thinking about a bunch because the feature story in the Times Magazine last week is about uh, the rise of the hospitalist, the mm -hmm. doctor who only works in the hospital and isn't a general practitioner, so the doctor that you see right. more often if you don't have a GP, mm -hmm. and thinking about kinds of work that are meant to be forms of care but can't be because of their like corporate apparatus. Sure. And like that dissonance between like really wanting to provide care, really wanting to feel cared for, but feeling sort of like a number or a unit or like abstracted is something that's happening for Anna's poem. Sure, absolutely. Um, and I think a, a huge part of that is that we don't really have a clear sense of a speaker, we don't really have a clear sense of an object, that there's something happening to someone, mm -hmm. but it's not super clear like what that something is or who that someone is, Yeah. right? Um, I think a huge part of that too for me is this, this new definitions of doing poorly, doing up on the face, that incredible first sentence of this poem. Yeah. Doing D-O-I-N-G -O and doing D-E-W-I-N-G, that sort of uh, the homophonic nature of that, um, I think for me very much enacts this sense that um, the poem is both enacted and being enacted at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. It also reflects the scale, perhaps you remember the name of this, this the international scale of faces that you're supposed to be able to oh, yeah. use to communicate how you're doing if you're yeah. in a hospital mm -hmm. and thinking about what might exceed those definitions of like you have these 10 faces and what's appearing on your face is more extreme than what's appearing on the face scale. Right. Yeah. It's like something that's happening there also. Yeah. And doing up on the face the idea that the thing that you're experiencing is actually like coming through in your facial expressions or mm -hmm. in like how much you're like sweating or yeah. yeah. Which like all of this poem, all the information you get in this poem is sensory data of thinking sure. about sort of like noises coming from somewhere, not always aware of corners, sad and light jazzy, where the corners themselves are producing a kind of noise. Right. But all you're not like super aware of where they are. Maybe right. your vision's a little fuzzy or your sense yeah. of space is a little out of whack. All the sounds are in miniature. Right. The room is large and room lights. Like scale is really hard. There's something kind of like yeah. fun housey about this. Yeah. In a way where you're like worried for the speaker but don't have enough information to be able to yeah. like substantiate that worry. Sure. And to me that really speaks to this idea that um, like a hospital room, a hospital space, visiting someone in a hospital or thinking about a person in a hospital is a really hard thing to kind of like come to terms with. Yeah. And it's one of those things that it's always surprising whenever you walk into someone's hospital room. Yeah. To see someone that you care about in a hospital room is always like a really disarming experience. And I feel like this poem is speaking very much to the experience of being the person who is visiting and also the one who is visited. Totally. Yeah. Um, do you want to do something with the Aristotle line? Yeah. It's so brilliant. Yeah. And it, because it's thinking about what the poem is you know, about for me as much as poems are about anything, mm -hmm. is the kinds of expression that exceed language but communicate feeling of thinking about sensory data that gives you a very clear sense of how somebody is doing where maybe it's not possible for them to talk mm -hmm. and so thinking both about like thinking towards someone whether you're the person in the hospital or the person visiting 
but being worried that that thought doesn't do anything like the colloquial discourse of like I'm thinking you good thoughts I hope you get better right and thought by itself moving nothing and then and thought by itself making it impossible for an action to have happened which is something that's so great about that next sentence no one decides to have sacked you might decide to sack Troy, right. but you can't decide to have sacked it. Exactly. Which I find super lovely. Yeah. Especially given the context of this being like a medical mm. situation. Yeah. Well, Davey, thank you so much. This was great. Thanks, Anna. If you liked this episode, watch another and subscribe. And join us for ModPo, a free and open course at modpo.org.